Welcome to This One Thing with Carrie Kenyon Dern. One verse, one truth, one choice. Welcome everyone to This One Thing podcast. I'm I'm Melina Puente and I am here with Crystal Wright. Hi, Crystal. Hey, Melina. (laughs) So as you can tell, Carrie Kenyon Dern is not here today. And we just want to let everybody know that we are praying for the Kenyan family and for Lou Ordili and his family in the loss of Kim Ordili's um, passing. So I just want to say welcome to the podcast, everyone. And Crystal, we are going to get to do Psalm 121. Thank you so much for picking that one. Um, Would you like to start us off with uh, some context today? Yeah. And just because you brought up Kim and her family, I know there's been so many people that were blessed by her life and her journey. And the theme of Psalm 121 and what we're talking about today really is around the theme and the reality that we're all in the process of pilgrimage of a journey. And the purpose of that is to journey towards and in the pursuit of the presence of God. And so Psalm 21 is actually part of a group of psalms. There's 15 psalms starting in Psalm 120 through Psalm 134 that are called the Psalms of Ascent. And in the Hebrew, that word ascent means going up. And all Mm. of those psalms were worship songs that they sang as they were on pilgrimage, as they were journeying towards Jerusalem. And they were songs of worship. um, And they were songs of worship and acknowledgement of God's sovereignty and his attention and his care for his people in both easy times and hard times. And it's interesting because these, this group of Psalms, some of them were written at what we would maybe describe as easier times Mm -hmm. for the people of Israel and times that were more difficult. And they sang these songs annually as they would actually journey back to Jerusalem for the celebration feasts in the Holy City. But they were also songs that they sang when they were in exile as they were just thinking about and preparing for that future time when they believed God was going to take them back home. And so they, all of these psalms are really focused on that idea of uh, being exiles, but moving towards the pursuit of God and where his presence is, and really that idea of making their way back home. Mm. And I think that is a truth that has been true since the day things fell apart in the Garden of Eden yeah. <laughs> till now, where this broken world that we live in We are all on this journey and this pilgrimage and God's heart and his intention has always been to bring us back home into the fullness of his presence. And so the Israelites had a very tangible, like physical place where they associated with the worship and the presence of God in the temple in Jerusalem. But that's a truth that has transcended from the beginning of this broken world to today. And so I think we can really connect to that same idea of being on pilgrimage and God's heart and his desire is to bring us fully back into his presence. But it's not a thing that happens overnight in our lives. We are daily um, walking that out and in good times and hard times. So that's just to give us a little bit of a understanding of what these psalms were really directed towards. And I'm going to read all of Psalm 121, even though I know we typically focus in on one verse and we will, but it's short enough. I think it's helpful to read the whole thing. So I'm going to do that. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now 
and forevermore. The message throughout this entire psalm is really the same, but we do want to focus in on one verse that we can pull truth out of and and make some application. And so we're going to really look at verse 3, and I'll reread that verse. It says, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. So Melina, would you maybe share first the truth that you've pulled out of this yeah, verse? Yeah, I'm happy to. I, for me, Crystal, the intent of realizing that the one who watches over me isn't sleeping, mm-hmm. and when it's like the one, the one who's watching, that's God. And realizing that the truth is that I said yes to Jesus and I made a covenant in that relationship. And it is through Jesus that I can be in that face-to-face place, pursuing God, being in that presence. And it is a covenant that is the same God that was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the same God that isn't going to sleep through my pilgrimage, isn't going to sleep through anything that I'm going through. So in that truth, it's remembering that it is the same God that these Israelites on their pilgrimage Mm -hmm. were trusting that I can put my trust in as well. Yeah, there's something really comforting about that too. And as I was looking into just the background of these particular group of Psalms, I was reading about, yes, they are individual. I mean, God speaks individually to us as independent people on a journey, but it's also very much has an overarching corporate feel as well that throughout all of human history, God's children have been on the Mm, same journey and we're in it together. And I think oftentimes too, they would journey together um, on their way back to Jerusalem. And so there's something really beautiful about knowing, first of all, that God doesn't change, but that we're not alone in our pilgrimage. God has throughout all of human history had his people that he has called and that he has given that invitation into his presence. So um, I was looking at the truth of um, just the idea of God watching over. Mm. And that word is used five times in this short eight verse chapter um, that he is watching. He is watching. And that stood out to me because I think God's been challenging me right now in my own faith to try to understand better what is my role in my faith journey or what have I thought my role was Mm -hmm. and what's God's role. And so I think that despite knowing the Lord for many years, I'm still trying to understand what depends on me and what doesn't and what just depends on the Lord. And so I have a tendency to think, well, this is a life God has given me to live. I need to live it out in the right way. I need to make the journey the right way, not make bad turns off the side of the road or (laughs) take myself off a cliff. or um, And I think there's some truth to that. We are called to obedience. But this just reminds me that God has such an active role. He's constantly watching over Mm. us. And this isn't a passive, you do your job to be the right kind of followers of me, and you'll end up in the right place. It's He's watching over us. He's not going to let our foot slip. And that doesn't mean things aren't going to get hard, that we're not going to make mistakes, um, but that he is so actively present. Mm -hmm. And that's been good for me to to think about that. And the fact that he doesn't slumber, you know, the thing that came to my (laughs) mind is he knows us. He's like, I'm not closing my eyes for one minute because I know (laughs) I know what will happen to you if if he isn't the one constantly at work on our behalf. And so I just, uh, I guess I'm grateful. And I think I'm learning even more how to just relinquish my false ideas that I'm somehow the one getting myself anywhere Mm. in my journey with the Lord. It's him watching over. It's him protecting. It's him providing. Amen. Amen. Yes. And remembering that he holds us the whole time. There's just something about this protection understanding he's watching like there's Mm -hmm. it's not just I'm watching you what are you going to do it's a watching that's protective yeah that there's a security and a safety that is mentioned you know at the last two verses specifically where you know he's like he keeps you the Lord keeps you the Lord keeps you Mm -hmm. and uh, the choice for me in in this process is 
I try to keep myself, like I try to think, do I have enough money in my bank account? Is my job the right mm-hmm. job? Can I keep Melina safe? And it's, it's a joke. I mean, of course, it's I can't. <laughs> but I think this psalm is a wonderful reminder that the Lord keeps me. And currently, I get to practice being a principal this summer. And so this is a new transition mm-hmm. for me. And then next year, my job is shifting a little bit as well in terms of just more responsibility and, and leadership there. I'm realizing as I pilgrimage into this summer and get ready for the next year. This is such a great reminder that he's the one who's going to keep me. And regardless of, I think about how you shared earlier, the Israelites pilgrimage. I mean, they were in areas that they weren't liked. And Mm -hmm. there was things that, you know, were offensive to them and had nothing to do with their kind of living the way God called them to. But they pilgrimaged through those places to get where they needed to be. And I think for us, being able to keep our eyes on that prize, to be able to pursue that face-to-face place with the one who keeps us and that Mm -hmm. protection. And I think uh, in light, we were talking about Kim earlier in this process, and I think that's something that really inspired me about her, Mm -hmm. is in this pilgrimage that she was on, even though physically she couldn't go anywhere, but her mind allowed her to continue to pursue this face-to-face place and challenged me every time we interacted uh, via text or via email. Mm -hmm. It was just this always in pursuit of that and knowing the one who keeps her so that she could keep her eyes on that heavenly prize. Mm -hmm. So I just um, was encouraged by that relationship and um, grateful that she's in the arms of Jesus now for sure. But for us that are here, I love that even in the message that was shared at her memorial, that baton that's getting passed. And are we going to keep running this race? Are we going to stay on this pilgrimage to to shine the light of Jesus and recognize that's our goal, that's Mm -hmm. our purpose, is that where are we going in this place? And on the journey, do I know I'm kept by him? Mm -hmm. And so my choice would definitely be to remember I am kept by the Lord. And his hand is sovereign. And so... Again, regardless of how much money I have in the bank and actually what job I have, or there's just nothing I can do to keep myself safe. He is ultimately the one true God for for my life. And I have to trust that the pilgrimage I'm on is the one he's got for me. It's interesting, too, how, I mean, his presence, yes, we are all waiting for the return of Jesus and everything to be made right where we're in the presence of God and there's no more sin and there's no more suffering, but we still get to experience intimacy with him along the way to that. So it's like, and I know that's what Kim experienced and that's what the call is for each of us as well. Yeah. I think I'm very, I mean, the choice for me is very similar as well. It's trying to recognize those areas of my life that I subtly start to believe that somehow my journey is dependent upon me and either my goodness of like how well I'm doing at it or Mm -hmm. the times I'm not doing so well (laughs) at it. And I actually, the Lord really highlighted that for me even before we picked this verse. This was probably about a week and a half ago. Um, Our friend, our dear friend Shelby, who... um, is a good friend to both of us, but I was sharing some struggles with her about ministry that I was having currently, and I kept comparing it to a time of ministry in my past where things had gone really well and I didn't have those struggles, and I just kept using that comparison, and I, she looked at me at one point, um, and I could tell she didn't want to say what she was about to say, but she knew she needed to. (laughs) And she just challenged me in a very loving way and said, Crystal, you need to stop taking credit for what happened well in the past. Mm. And the second she said that, I knew how true that was and how subtle our thoughts get twisted around trying to think that either because it went so well is because I was doing everything right and God was blessing that And because it's not going well, must be a reflection either of my mistakes or other people's Mm. mistakes. And I was subtly kind of putting myself at the epicenter of God's story and journey instead of putting him there and giving him full credit for 
the great things that happened in pa- in the past, but also giving him the credit that what's happening in the present, he's still in the midst of. Amen. And that um, I can continue to surrender and really trust him that he his goodness and his sovereignty and his purposefulness, even in the challenges that I'm facing now that are have been new to me. So I think the choice is just that, for me, that subtle recognition um, when the Holy Spirit convicts me of when I'm putting myself in the role of God and just trying to just surrendering to him mm. that... I am just a pilgrim. I am yes, just yes. trying to be in pursuit of his presence and that he is ultimately in charge of the journey and even my obedience, right? The obedience yeah. needs to be because I'm pursuing his presence. I want his presence, not because I'm trying to yes. do the right thing to get where I'm supposed to be to honor God. So I think that's how I would encourage the listeners too to just recognize those moments and... Um, Maybe ask yourself, are you trusting that God is watching over you or that you're watching over Mm. yourself? And if there's any part of it where we feel like, like you were saying, we're watching over ourselves, we probably need to do a little repentance and (laughs) re-surrender, you know, to the Lord who is sovereign. Amen. Thank you, Crystal. I, I, what you said just a second ago is that idea of presence. And I remember when the Holy Spirit reminded me his presence is greater than his blessing. And mm-hmm. so regardless of what we gain potentially on this pilgrimage yeah. is here nor there, it is the presence of God. And just walking this mm-hmm. this pilgrimage out is such a sweet opportunity, but it comes with you know the challenges and also the blessing. But yeah, that we would pursue his presence over mm-hmm. everything else. Yeah, That's awesome. You want to pray for us? Yeah, I would love to pray for us. And as we head into prayer, just remembering what a pastor spoke into my life back this was in Portland several years ago he said Crystal it's better to limp into the promised land than never to get there oh, that's good. and just that idea of like we may feel like we're sprinting into the promised land and we may feel like we're just barely making it across the finish line but that's really mm. irre- irrelevant yeah. it's the fact that we are entering into God's uh, place of rest and um, his place of dwelling for us. So, mm, good. yeah. So let's close in prayer. And we do want to lift up um, Lou and Jessa and Joe as well. So let's let's pray for them. Father, thank you so much for your genuine attention and care for each one of us. And as humans, Lord, I know sometimes I can fake like I'm paying attention, that I'm caring. Um, But with you, it is completely pure and it's completely true and trustworthy. You are watching over us, Lord. You are watching to keep our feet from slipping. You are um, not taking a rest from your care for Mm. us and your desire, Lord, for us to be in intimacy with you, to be in your presence, to be... um, walking out the path that you have for each one of us. And Lord, I don't always understand why you take some through the mountaintops and why you take some through the valleys, Lord. I do not pretend to understand that. Um, But I know, Lord, that you do not lie. And so when you tell us that you are watching over and protecting and providing, that that is true. So thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that that truth would just comfort and give hope and strength to Lou and to Jessa and to Joe, Lord, as they're continuing to um, grieve the loss of Kim here on earth. And I pray that for um, the entire extended family as well, Lord. Thank you for the um, celebration and hope in knowing that Kim is with you, that she has reached um, the new Jerusalem, the new dwelling place, Mm -hmm. that she is with you, Lord. We are so grateful for that. And Um, We just trust you. Help us. Help us to trust you even more um, as day-to-day situations come up that tempt us to want to take control over our own lives. Help us to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for This One Thing with Carrie Kenyon Dern. Find all our episodes by clicking the podcast link located on our website at fetterfree.org.